Hey gang, I'm Pastor Doug, and welcome to my Lego factory. Thank you for joining us for His Story, where we connect deeper in our relationship with Jesus and deeper in our relationships with each other, all by learning more about what the Bible has to say and applying it to our lives. Today, we're talking about how well God knows us. God wants to have a relationship with you and with me. It just amazes me that God created seven billion people on this planet. Yet God wants to have a close personal relationship with me. And God also wants us to get to know Him better. And God wants us to get to know others better so that we can help them get to know Him. When we begin to get to know others really well, we start to notice good qualities in them or things that we really like or admire about them. Like maybe we notice how they treat other people. Perhaps they are really good and kind and welcoming to others. Or maybe they're really generous to other people. Perhaps they're really good at giving or sharing with others. Or maybe we think it's really great when we see them helping others. Perhaps they're really quick to volunteer, to clean up, or to go get something for somebody else, or to help out in some kind of way. When we notice these things about other people, and we take the time to tell them, we are answering the question, do you know what I can do? Now, when we're answering the question, do you know what I can do? We don't exactly mean, do you know that I can do a somersault? Or do you know that I could ride a skateboard? Or did you know that I got an A on my spelling test? No, what we mean is, do other people around you see good things in you that you can't see for yourself? Or do you see things, good things, in the other people around you that they can't see for themselves? When we take the time to share these things with other people, or when other people take the time to share these things with us, we call that encouragement. Have you ever been encouraged by someone else? I don't know about you, but when someone takes the time to encourage me, I feel like I can move a mountain. When someone takes the time to encourage me, it gives me the fuel to do what I do. In fact, it makes me want to do what I do even more, work even harder at it. When someone takes the time to encourage me, it makes me feel like I'm truly making a difference in this world. Now we can encourage others by saying that they are good at sports, or they're good at school, or they're good at dancing, or they're good at drawing. These things are all well and good. But when we see someone taking small steps to be more like Jesus in their life, the Bible says that we need to encourage them that we need to help them along their way. There is nothing more amazing than to watch someone grow in their faith. There's nothing more amazing than to watch someone learn to serve Jesus by serving others. There's nothing more amazing than to watch someone's life be changed because they have a relationship with Jesus. When we take the time to encourage others in their relationship with Jesus, God will use us to help that person feel loved, seen, valued, and appreciated. When people grow in their relationship with Jesus, their life begins to fill with love, joy, peace, and hope that can only come 
from a relationship with Jesus. And sooner rather than later, their life will be full of friends. Because these qualities are attractive and people want to be around others who treat them well. When we left off our true story from the Bible, the people were displeased. Jesus had gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. Yes, it was true. Zacchaeus was a notorious sinner. But as we talked about before, all of us are sinners. We all make mistakes. We all make bad decisions. We all will let others down from time to time. And Jesus' love for Zacchaeus is the same love he has for us. Unconditional. Zacchaeus didn't need to have it all together to have a relationship with Jesus. Zacchaeus just needed to have a desire to have a relationship with Jesus in the first place. The Bible doesn't tell us exactly what took place in Zacchaeus' home that night and what kind of conversations were had, but we do know that Zacchaeus must have had an important conversation with Jesus. We know that Zacchaeus became a follower of Jesus and came to know him as Lord. Now what was so amazing was that Zacchaeus' life was forever changed by this encounter he had with Jesus. Zacchaeus went from being someone who stole other people's money and someone who worked for the bad guys to someone who now gave his money away, who now helped poor people and who paid back more than what he had taken from others. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor, Lord. And if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. And it was in this moment that Jesus gathered the crowd together. And in front of everyone, he encouraged Zacchaeus. Jesus responded, Salvation has come to this home today. For this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the Son of Man, that's Jesus speaking about himself, came to seek and save those who are lost. It was as if Jesus was saying to everyone, Zacchaeus is a new man. He was lost, now he's found. Zacchaeus has shown himself to be a true man of faith, like one of our ancestors, Abraham. From that moment on, everything changed for Zacchaeus. He decided he would follow Jesus with the rest of his life. And people must have continued to encourage him too. After the Gospels and the Bible were written, we can read historical documents that show that Zacchaeus became the first pastor of one of the very first churches in a town called Caesarea. This church was so successful, it grew and grew and grew for almost a thousand years. Now, I like to think that even though Zacchaeus was still a short man, he was trusted with a church larger than the tallest sycamore tree. Perhaps not in height, but because of how full of people it was, how healthy it had become, and how many lives were changed by Jesus. All because Jesus took the time to know Zacchaeus by name to show Zacchaeus that he mattered in this world, to learn where Zacchaeus lives and what his life is like, to allow Zacchaeus to confess what he had done and ask for forgiveness, and to encourage Zacchaeus in what he can do. And his desire was now to help others because Jesus had helped him and changed his life. Have you ever had someone believe in you? Have you ever had someone encourage you? You know, we can make a difference in someone's day, in someone's week, in someone's month, even in someone's life, simply by encouraging them. God will use us 
to help that person feel loved, feel seen, feel valued, and feel appreciated. You know, the Bible says, and let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another. In this verse, we have two parts. The first part is this. We have to show up and meet with each other regularly. How can we encourage one another if we're not here together? The second part is that we need to be a source of encouragement for one another. We need to take time to build each other up, not tear each other down. You know, we could be more like Jesus when we take the time to show up and to encourage others. The Bible says that when we encourage other people, it's like we are breathing life into that person. Hey, you know, Jesus loves you and I do too. If you see me, make sure you give me a high five or say hi. Goodbye.